Okay, I'll be putting a series of uh, videos now on uh, Viva Voce examination uh, from upper lip. And first, I'll consider osteology. And the first bone uh, that we are going to cover in this video is clavicle. Now, uh, these videos, they will provide you quick revision uh, of bones of upper limb just before practical examination. And all the important questions and along with the answers you will find in this video. Okay, so now when you pick up clavicle uh, during Viva Voce examination, the first question often asked is which type of bone is clavicle? So the answer is it is a modified long bone. Now why we say that it is a uh, long bone? Because this is involved in weight transmission. All long bones are involved in weight transmission. Why we call it modified but modified because it does not have a medullary cavity next question asked is what are the peculiarities of the clavicle so you must remember there are how many characteristic feature or peculiarities of clavicle in total you have seven points to mention so what are these seven points let us look at them the first is that this is the only long bone that is placed horizontally in the body so this is the only long bone which is placed horizontally all others are placed vertically in the body then second one is that it has no medullary cavity i have already mentioned that then third is this is the first bone to begin ossification right and this begins around ossification around fifth to sixth week of intrauterine life so fifth to sixth week of intra uterine life and is the last to complete ossification when does it complete ossification that is uh, around 25th year of life so this is the third point then the fourth point is it has how many centers of ossification it has two primary centers of ossification usually uh, in fact all other long bones they have just one primary center of ossification then we have fifth point it is subcutaneous throughout so uh, you can feel it from its medial end to lateral end throughout you can feel this bone so it is subcutaneous throughout then sixth is it may be pierced by supraclavicular nerve with supraclavicular nerve especially it is uh, the middle supraclavicular nerve and the last point is most of this bone has intramembranous ossifications you must be knowing all long bones they have endochondral ossification but clavicle except for its medial end has intramembranous ossification so these are the seven peculiarities of clavicle that you must know now how will you determine the side of the clavicle once this has been asked then you are asked uh, determine the side of the clavicle so how will you determine first of all you must know basic parts of the clavicle and they are it has got two ends medial and it has got lateral end right remember all long bones they have two ends and a shaft similarly clavicle also that also has uh, two ends and these are the medial end this is the medial end and this here is the lateral end and in between what do we have in between here this whole thing is the shaft this whole thing is the shaft so in case of long bones you have upper end and lower end and in the middle you have shaft because those are those are vertically placed so uh, in case of clavicle you have medial lateral end and you have the shaft there now next is how will you identify which is the medial end and which is the lateral end so that can be identified because the medial end here is expanded and it is quadrilateral in shape whereas the lateral end you can see is flattened from above downwards so this way you can now you can place the quadrilateral end on the medial side and the flattened uh, from above downwards that end on the lateral side next let us see what about the shaft the shaft here is curved and you will find that the medial two-third of the shaft that is convex anteriorly so medial two-third of the shaft is convex anteriorly and obviously it will be concave posteriorly so now you know which uh, part has to be directed anteriorly 
the clavicle with that part right that is where the medial two third is convex anteriorly that should be facing you will put in front next is superior and inferior surface now how will you find that superior surface is smooth you can see here the superior surface is smooth whereas if you look at the inferior surface there is a groove right in uh, this groove which you see here this is known as subclavian groove so because of these you can you will be able to determine the side of the clavicle and this clavicle belongs to left side now as i said the superior surface uh, of the shaft of the clavicle is smooth but the inferior surface has got grooves and certain uh, rough uh, parts which are present on the inferior surface so let us look at those general features now we will start with the medial side if you see medially there is a roughened part here on the medial side and this impression here this will be uh, a ligament will be attached there right so we will look at that ligament also that is costoclavicular ligament will be attached there and then in the middle we find that there is this groove and this groove is known as subclavian groove right we'll see that a muscle is attached and a fascia to the margins of this we will just look at that then the third thing now come to the lateral side so you have a rough, rough impression on the medial side you have a groove in the middle of the shaft and on the lateral uh, side of the clavicle on the inferior surface what you find you find a bony prominence that, that is a tubercle this tubercle is known as conoid tubercle and from the conoid tubercle if you see here going anteriorly and laterally you have a ridge and this ridge is known as trapezoid ridge this also is going to provide attachment to these two right the conoid tubercle and trapezoid line will provide attachment to a ligament known as uh, coracoclavicular ligament right so let us now see the surfaces and borders of clavicle as i said earlier the clavicle shaft is curved and the medial two third of the clavicle is cylindrical in shape whereas the lateral one third of the uh, clavicle that is flattened from above downwards right so there will be different border surfaces uh, in these two parts let us first consider the medial two third so medial two, two third is round or cylindrical so there will be no obvious borders Uh, in this part and there are only four surfaces so the four surfaces are superior surface inferior surface anterior surface which is convex you can see here and the posterior surface which is concave whereas when we come to the lateral one third as i said it is flattened from above downwards that means the surfaces will be superior surface and inferior surface and we have two borders the anterior border and the posterior border now next question which is asked is which is the most common site of fracture of clavicle right so that is obvious where there is maximum curvature that will become a weak site so here the junction of medial 2/3 and lateral 1/3 of the clavicle this is the most common site of fracture of clavicle which can be seen in this x-ray also you can see here this is the site where which is most commonly fractured in case of clavicle next question that can be asked uh, is what are the joints formed by the clavicle so as you know clavicle has got two ends so the, it can form two joints right one on the at the medial end another at the lateral end so let us see which are these joints on the medial end we have sternoclavicular joint right because it is obvious uh, medially we have it articulates with the sternum and which part of the sternum this is manubrium sterni it articulates with that and which type of joint is formed this is saddle variety of synovial joint at the lateral end the lateral end of the clavicle is going to articulate with the acromion process here of the scapula this is scapula bone this is the acromion process and the joint formed is known as acromioclavicular joint and which type of joint is this this is plain synovial joint so what are the joints formed by the clavicle medial end articulates with manubrium sterni to form the sternoclavicular joint variety is saddle type lateral end articulates with acromion process to form acromioclavicular joint which is plain type of synovial joint
next is you can be asked to mark the attachments of muscles and ligaments on the clavicle and you'll be provided chalks right so either they can say uh, which muscles are uh, attached to the clavicle show us their attachment right or you can be asked a specific question uh, name show us the attachment of the muscle on its superior surface or on its anterior surface or name the muscles that are attached to the lateral one third of the clavicle so this way they can ask questions but you should know all the muscles that are attached and the ligaments attached on the clavicle so in total there are six muscles which are attached and four you will can view from the superior aspect uh, one will be present in the groove on the inferior surface and one is present on the posterior surface at the medial end of the clavicle both the ligaments there are two ligaments we have already seen that they will be attached on the inferior surface right so keep this in mind let us start with the superior view and from the medial uh, part of the clavicle so first muscle is sternocleidomastoid this is the superior surface so from there the muscle that is attached here is sternocleidomastoid now you don't have to mug up these muscles you can feel your own clavicle it is subcutaneous in fact and at the medial end just above the clavicle you reach neck and this muscle you can feel when you turn your neck towards the opposite side this muscle is the sternocleidomastoid clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid that takes origin from superior surface another muscle which takes origin from this anterior surface of the medial two third almost whole of this this muscle again you can feel when you go just below the clavicle right you uh, find there is chest wall and which muscle is there that is pectoralis major right so you can see here from the anterior surface right of the medial two third almost whole of this which muscle will be taking origin pectoralis major now let us come to the lateral one third so lateral one third first is okay so this is pectoralis major that can be seen here okay so this is pectoralis major next is uh, lateral one third anterior border now right so muscles will be attached to anterior and posterior border and again it is very simple if you look at the lateral end if you go below right you can feel or anteriorly you feel here deltoid muscle right so anterior border of lateral one third will provide origin to the deltoid muscle which you can see here and the posterior border right that is going to provide insertion to trapezius this is simple to understand you if you have to feel your trapezius you have to put your hand on the back and if you have to feel the deltoid then you have to put your hand in front so anterior border will provide uh, of the lateral one third will provide origin to deltoid muscle and posterior border of lateral one third will provide insertion to trapezius muscle looking at the inferior surface of the clavicle two muscles and two ligaments will be attached superior surface four muscles inferior surface two muscles two ligaments so first muscle we will look at the posterior surface near the medial end and this muscle is sternohyoid this is simple to understand medially you have the sternum bone so sterno from the sternum and from the clavicle this muscle will go to the hyoid bone sternohyoid muscle there is other the muscle which is attached to a groove now on the inferior surface of shaft or clavicle and this muscle is the subclavius muscle so this muscle is subclavius muscle now there is a uh, fascia which is attached along sorry fascia which is attached along the margins of this subclavian groove along this and this fascia is known as this fascia is known as clavi pectoral fascia this is clavi pectoral fascia so this encloses this muscle as well as another muscle that is pectoralis minor okay now let us look at the ligaments so there are two ligaments that will be attached uh, near the medial end you have costoclavicular ligament it is simple to understand here because uh, this ligament will be going from the first rib and first costal cartilage till the clavicle so this is costoclavicular ligament cc both the ligaments are cc costoclavicular on the lateral end we have another ligament cc coracoclavicular ligament so because laterally you will have the on the posterior aspect the scapula right so going from the clavicle to the 
coracoid process of the scapula. You can see here, this is the coracoid process of the scapula. This ligament is coracoclavicular ligament. Now, it has got two parts. We have already seen the rough parts on the inferior surface, conoid tubercle and trapezoid line. So, conoid part is attached to conoid tubercle and the trapezoid part is attached to the trapezoid ridge or trapezoid line, which you can see here. This is the conoid part and this is the trapezoid part. This ligament is going from inferior surface of clavicle to the coracoid process. So, these are the attachments on clavicle. Now, next is uh, which structures are related to the posterior surface of the clavicle. So, which are those structures? Let us see here. In this picture, you can see this is the brachial plexus. So, we have here the roots are there, the trunks are there and the divisions are there. So, divisions and formation of cords that will be passing behind the clavicle. You can also see some vessels here, right? So, these vessels are the subclavian artery and the subclavian vein. So, they will be also related to the posterior uh, surface of the clavicle there, medial two-third. Then, we can see here another set of vessels coming from head and neck and these are the internal jugular uh, vein that can be seen here, right? This is the internal jugular vein, this is the subclavian vein and here you can see they will be forming a vein just behind the medial end of the clavicle, right? And that vein will be uh, the brachiocephalic vein, right? So, these structures will come in relation. Let us see here. These will be divisions of brachial plexus will be related. Second is the third part of the subclavian artery, right? Third part of the subclavian artery that will come in relation. And then we have the terminal parts of the subclavian vein, terminal part of internal jugular vein, these two veins will join together to form brachiocephalic vein just behind the medial end of the clavicle. Now, you can be also asked about uh, ossification of clavicle because it is different from other long bones. And uh, so, there are two primary centers of ossification which appear in the shaft of the clavicle during fifth to sixth week of intrauterine life. Remember, this is the first bone to begin ossification. And there is only one secondary center of ossification that is for the medial end. And this part is going to ossify in cartilage. Rest of the bone has got membranous ossification. This uh, secondary center of ossification appears between 15 to 20 years of age and fuses with the rest of the bone by 25 years. So, this is the last bone to complete ossification. This is important that you should remember. Okay, coming to clinical anatomy, one we have already discussed, you should know the site of fracture of clavicle that is at the junction of medial two-third and lateral one-third. Another thing that can be asked is, do you have any idea about what is cleidocranial dysostosis or dysplasia? So, you should know the answer. Cleidocranial dysplasia or dysostosis, this is a defect which affects mostly the bones which are derived from intramembranous ossification. So, there is a defect in the intramembranous ossification. Uh, so, the bones which develop within the uh, by um, intramembranous ossification, these are the bones of the cranium and the clavicles, right? So, there will be, you will find uh, that it is characterized by delayed closure of cranial sutures, right? So, because those cranial bones, they develop up within the intramembranous so the ossification is not proper and there will be wide sutures would be there so delayed closure of the cranial sutures because the bones have not developed completely at the right time then hypoplastic or aplastic clavicles the clavicle could be very small or they could be absent also the two shoulders they can touch each other right and there will be multiple dental abnormalities also so, this completes the uh, video on clavicle. So, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe my channel so that I can put more such videos. And if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy, all types of that, then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com. Thanks once again.